There are a lot of different chart types out there and knowing which one to choose that will best reflect your data can be a little bit of a challenge. The good news is when it comes to communicating, certainly in a business environment, it's safe to say you can rely upon a set of fairly standard and typical graph options. That being said, rarely is there a single right way to graph your data. Rather, any data set can be graphed in a number of different ways, and each view will allow us to more or less easily see different things. You should always look to dedicate some time to choosing an effective visual. And to begin this process, we highly recommend moving away from your tools and sketching. This can be as simple as grabbing a pen and paper, or like I'm doing here, using a tablet if you feel more comfortable. Sketching has a number of benefits. You can iterate quickly. Perfection isn't the goal. You'll understand that when you see some of my sketches later on. It also ensures that we include what's needed to be shown with the data. There aren't any elements of visual clutter, grid lines, repeated labels, data markers, categorical colors that can quickly make our views overwhelming. We aren't limited by what our tools can do, or more importantly, our knowledge of what our tools can do. And so we can explore maybe some novel views without committing time to learning how to build them. It's also a great time to get feedback. And finally, it's fun just to get away from the computer for a bit. Let's look at an example now of this iterative process. Imagine you work in marketing for an organization that rents space for events. The following table shows the five types of events and the yearly revenue per event. Spend a moment taking it in. What can you easily observe about the trends? For me, I can see the pretty immediate and devastating impact that the pandemic had during the years 2020 and 2021. Quickly scanning down the columns, I can see that weddings had a big boost post pandemic. Fundraisers are gradually decreasing, uh, proms are back to pre-pandemic levels and rising, off-sites are nowhere near where they were in 2019, and holidays have generally recovered. So that all took a little bit of work. I had to scan down the columns and pull out the numbers and compare the numbers with previous years to get a sense of where there was a positive or negative movement. And that's one of the challenges we have with tables. We have to spend a little bit of time processing them. So we should look to visualize our data and see whether any of those insights are retrievable that little bit quicker. The first option we can look at is bars. Bars allow us to compare between categories incredibly easily, and we have a good variety of options on how we can order our data as well. Now with this sketch, I'm able to compare each of the events in isolation, and for example, see how fundraising is continuing to decline. What I struggle to do with this view, however, is compare the events against each other. And while this isn't a particularly complicated chart, it also feels a little bit difficult as well. As we are only really comparing the ends of the bars, well, let's just connect those ends with a line. This certainly removes a lot of the visual weight that we had before, and I can more easily see the trend of each of the event types. But I still have that challenge of comparing them against one another. For example, how does weddings compare to offsites in 2022? But now we are using lines, which is a great way to track continuous data. This gives me another idea. Now we can see if there are any common trends. Now, of course, the pandemic dip is most noticeable here, but as 2022 begins, we can see which of the event types are recovering quicker. But there are a lot of lines here. More work would have to be done to make these insights clearer to an audience. One way to reduce the complexity is to reduce the number of years being plotted. The pandemic dip is certainly eye-catching, but does it distract from what we're really looking for? Maybe we could remove those in-between years and check our latest position against where we were in 2019. So this slope chart, or essentially a line chart with two points, gives a much clearer view of the change between those two years. Now I can clearly see the positive change for weddings, flat performance for holidays, and the slower to recover categories of offsites, proms, and fundraisers. We lose detail with this view, of course, and we haven't included the forecast, which could be important to show, but it's a worthwhile option to consider. Up until this point, we've concentrated on the absolute numbers. It might be worth taking a look at the proportion. Now with this 100% stacked bar, we can see the proportion of revenue for each event by year. 
but there's a fair bit going on here. And with this many stacks, it's certainly important to consider which elements you might be looking to highlight and position them at the top and bottom of your chart so that an easier comparison can be made. In this example, my focus is turning to the weddings increase and how the offsite proportion has decreased markedly. The other event types, meanwhile, are relatively flat. As we've seen, there are many pros and cons to each of the options there, and there are many other options that are worthwhile considering too. So when it comes to the next time you're wondering and asking yourself what chart should I use, set a timer for 10 minutes, grab yourself a pen and paper and just sketch out some ideas. Then when you're finished, evaluate those ideas, see which ones work, check out the pros and cons, or share it with a friend or a colleague to get their views as well. Which of these options would I choose? Well, there are a number of different factors to consider as well. Certainly the goals of our audience would be one, but let's assume for this particular example, we wanted to give our audience an update of how those different event types have recovered since the pandemic. Then I may choose either the slope chart or maybe the more detailed line chart to give that sense. It's worth noting that these aren't necessarily the right answers, but we've given ourselves a great base to start. And sketching out our ideas is a fantastic way to begin our process to finding our optimal graph choice. However, once we've found that, we need to do more work to make our message clear to our audience. And for that, I recommend watching this video next.